So to kick things off, Tom has put his cabaret career on hold briefly to give us some history. Uh, Tom, Tom Gordon studied astrophysics, the international space industry and science communication and is currently undertaking a PhD in physics education research. He's been a high school student and teacher and a policy officer at the National Measurements Inst Institute and he's currently the senior science communicator at the School of Physics at the University of Sydney. Tom, Tom ran in the last federal election in the seat of Watson and he's here tonight to talk about outcomes of the Australian science and innovation. Welcome Tom. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, so I'll, I'll be um, really quick because you mostly know all of this, uh, all of this stuff. But I want to run through a few uh, successes from Australian innovation and science funding. Uh, again, you're going to know most of this and there's heaps of stuff I've missed out, but I'll, I'll be nice and quick. The first one I wanted to mention is David Unipen. David Unipen, he's the guy on the $50 note, obviously, and he invented this thing here, which is the mechanical shearing, a shearer for shearing sheep. We still use versions of that today. David Unipen was a prolific inventor, a prolific uh, indigenous scientist. He invented or had over 90, 19 um, provisional patents and some that were uh, more sketches than paint, uh, patents. But he invented things like the mechanical shearer. Also, he tried to invent a perpetual motion machine unsuccessfully. He tried to invent um, also a, a helicopter based on the design of a boomerang, which I think is really cool. Uh, the point is uh, that he is an Australian inventor and scientist. He used the same process as we do. Um, but it's a bit of a, a weird start because there w he didn't have much funding. Uh, one of my science heroes is Ruby Payne Scott. She was one of the first people to uh, help develop the technology of radar, which really helped out in, uh, in uh, the world wars, right? Detecting, detecting things where they shouldn't be and, and uh, not having... Uh, one of my favourite stories... Sorry, one of my favourite stories about radar is that they tried to keep it a secret, you all know this again, they tried to keep it a secret so they made up the lie that you eat carrots therefore you can see at night. So all the Germans started eating carrots and that didn't work. But this is a real success of Australian innovation and Australian science. Another success is Woomera, uh, although we wouldn't call that a success now. This place used to be the heart of space research around the world, or one of the, the first places of uh, uh, space research around the world. Uh, this is a, a launch pad at Woomera. In its heyday, it's about to launch uh, a massive big test rocket for the European Space Agency. It's, it's a desolate landscape now. It, there's nothing there. That's still there and it's huge, but there's nothing there. Uh, they, they, st they still run some test rockets uh, in a place near there um, for uh, university students, uh, but these are very, very low funded uh, low funded things. The point is we once had a huge part of it because we were putting funding there. Australia has a massive part in the international space, uh, international space race because of our commitment to funding. This falls down of course when you have um, uh, you know forward-thinking governments that about 20 years ago when uh, when the laser interferometry, interferometry for gravitational wave observations, LIGO, uh, we, Australia was asked, or CSIRO was asked to be a part of that and put a small amount of funding towards that. And the government at the time said no. Uh, just two years ago they got the Nobel Prize. There's a few success stories that we've had, and again I've picked out only a few uh, success stories uh, for science funding. And I won't go too much into them, but one of them is from the ARC, the Australian Research Council. And I'm not going to go too much more into that because Andrea will take over there. Uh, but this is the Centre for Quantum Computation and Communication Technology. Australia is in, uh, in the race for quantum computers. There's an international race going on at the moment to make the first usable or useful quantum computer. A lot of people at the moment think that quantum computers is a solution looking for a problem, but these guys are the ones solving those problems. It's pretty exciting. There are a bunch of places is around just in Sydney, and that's just Sydney, trying to solve the problem of quantum computation. That will change the world, and we're a part of that race. Uh, and the ARC recognises that and gives, gives money to quantum computation. 
again, not going to go too much into it because Andrew will talk about NHMRC, but this is a, a lovely just a profile that they've got from their website. You can go and check out all the others. There's heaps of them. Uh, but this is Dr. Elizabeth Hodson, who has funding into uh, renal diseases in Aboriginal children uh, and got a couple of hundred thousand dollars for that. This is really important stuff, and it's a real success story when we can solve some problems, close gaps, etc. This is really important. Uh, CSIRO, another success story. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm denied about calling that a success story because this has had a, this investigator, HMS investigator, has had a lot of funding taken away from it. But this is one of the, excuse the pun, the flagships of CSIRO, where they're going out and doing uh, climate change research, Antarctic research to try and, uh, well, research to know more about what's going on in the oceans, what's going on in the climate. This is a fantastic ship, and it's really doing uh, punching above its weight for what we for what we pay for it. Uh, this is a, a, a nice, uh, a, a different uh, style of funding, so it's not government funding, but it's more like fundraising or, uh, or fundraising. Uh, we all know about uh, breast cancer research, and we know about fundraising because of the Pink Ribbon campaign. Everything's pink, you know, around Pink Ribbon time. Cricket players are pink, water bottles are pink, Tim Tams are pink, and we start talking about breast cancer research, which is insanely important. And as, oh, I've got my numbers here. And I need stats. So with breast cancer, in the year 2014, this is breast cancer here, we had a 30% improvement over about 30 years in survival rates of breast cancer because of the awareness and fundraising. This is gynecological cancer here, and we have only 9% increase in 30, in 30 years, right? There are reasons for that, you know, gynecological cancer is a bit of a taboo subject. Um, but breast cancer used to be a bit of a taboo subject. So funding in research actually saves lives. But we know that. There are many problems with science funding. And again, this is going to be, get, get covered. Oh, I need my stats again. As of a couple of years ago, in federal parliament there are only 20 politicians who have had training in a discipline related to science. 7% um, of MPs, that's 11 out of 150, and 12% of senators, that's 8 of 76, um, have training in STEM related careers. And that's much below the amount of people graduating with, with uh, STEM qualifications, about 33%. Even that's on the decline, right? But that's the, the representation we have in politics is much lower than, than, what, we are, than what we have people uh, with, with science degrees. This is a real problem, and I don't need to say why. Here's another, I just think that's a funny slide. Here's another problem. We don't have a science minister. That's a bit of a problem. Uh, we don't see it, it's important, apparently, to give money to the government to represent scientists uh, across Australia. We, the best we can do is Minister for Jobs and Innovation. While that's great, we don't have a science minister. That's a pretty big problem, if you ask me. And this is one of my favourite words, uh, post docalypse. <laughs> The problem here is, once you have uh, qualified scientists, there are not really any jobs for them in Australia. Around the world, it's difficult as a postdoc to get jobs. But mo a lot of the postdocs in Australia are going overseas to find jobs. There are fewer and fewer jobs for postdocs in Australia. And that's a big problem. But we might have a successful future if we think hard about it. Now, I've got a few question marks there because uh, <laughs> This made me laugh. Um, we actually have an Australian Space Agency now, which is wonderful. There's a, a couple of million dollars being thrown at that. But their logo on their website looks to me as if it's been thrown together with cut and paste. This font is different to any other font that you'll find on the Australian government website. It's bigger, it's bold, it's a different font. It's really strange to me. So that's why I've asked the question, is it a successful future? Yeah, sure, we've got a, a, space, a space force. A space agency. <laughs> but if we can't even get a logo right, like, I'm, I'm nervous about that. I'm really nervous about that. Also, I wonder where they got the idea for a space agency from. 
So we need people to start influencing us, uh, influencing uh, government, influencing the people who uh, fund science. And one of those places is a place like Questacon or education, teachers, universities, that sort of stuff. This is just a blanket kind of education, exciting people about it, getting us to talk about it. Like the breast cancer or gynecological cancer issue, we, we talk about it, people will eventually start funding it. So one of the places that we find influence is education. I'll, I'll finish up, but uh, one thing that I find is it's really exciting is that there is, you know, the, the vice chancellor of one of our universities, one of our top universities, in fact, by some metrics, the top university in Australia, is a scientist, not only a scientist, a Nobel Prize winning scientist. That's, that speaks a lot. Like if our, if our top people in our top universities are scientists, that's a lot. Our Australian of the Year is a quantum researcher from the group that I men uh, mentioned before, the, uh, the group at UNSW. These top people in Australia, our most trusted people, are scientists and I think that's pretty good. That to me tells us that we do value science, um, but I think we can value it with other things other than prizes. Uh, funding, for example. Oh, these are just a couple of other uh, inventions from, uh, from Australia. And I just want to finish with that one. That's just funny to me. <laughs> anyway, that's a really quick, brief outline of Australian funding in science. There you go. Thank you.